Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Ogwa Vivian Unyedibia. President Muhammadu Buhari has formally expressed Nigeria's appreciation to media practitioners in the country for enhancing the transparency and accountability of the nation's electoral process through professional conduct of the 2019 elections. Receiving an audience, the leadership of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, the president, however, made a case for support and cooperation with his administration towards bringing a sustainable end to the devastating consequences of the fake news phenomenon. We'll bring you details of that report in our subsequent bulletin. And moving on, INEC has scheduled 13th of April for the conduct of supplementary elections in River State, while governorship supplementary elections will not hold this Saturday in Bauchi and Adamawa states following court litigations. Well, this was during a press briefing by INEC in Abuja. Mia Ogidi reports. The commission encourages all registered voters in the areas where elections will be conducted to come out and cast their ballots. 18 states will have the feel of election activities again. Though some are for state assembly seats with just few polling units, others national assembly. But the major ones are the governorship supplementary polls in Benue, Sokoto, Kano and Plateau states on Saturday, March 23rd, River State will have its turn on the 13th of April 2019, while Adamawa and Tafawa Belewa local government area of Bauchi State will not take part in the governorship supplementary elections due to pending court litigations. It should however be noted that the litigation and consequential order only affects the collation of results for the governorship election in Tafawa Belewa local government area. Consequently, the supplementary elections will proceed as scheduled on Saturday, the 23rd day of March 2019, in the other 15 local government areas of Bauchi State, as well as in the Krifi State constituency supplementary elections in Krifi local government area. Similarly, the Adamawa State High Court issued an injunction restraining the Commission from proceeding with the supplementary elections following the application by the Movement for the Restoration and Defense of Democracy, MRDD, a registered political party which did not take play part in the main election. Notwithstanding the legal action over the supplementary governorship election, elections we hold in Nasarawo Binyeri State constituency in my Obelwa local government area of Adamawa State, where the election had to be countermanded following the death of a candidate before the polls as well as uh, in the Obagaya state constituency in Hong local government area. Even in the face of all these, governors whose elections have been concluded will go home with a certificate of return between the 27th and 29th of March 2019, while those whose elections are to be concluded in a later date will have their certificates of return on the 19th of April 2019. So, all eyes on March 23rd, for now, with a common prayer for these inconclusive elections to be concluded. Mie Ogidi, NT News. Well, ahead of the supplementary elections in six states of the Federation this Saturday, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has assured the electorate of the Commission's readiness to conduct a credible election. Guests on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria have equally urged INEC to ensure the credibility of its staff is not compromised. Serafina Ukun reports. Guests identified lapses on the part of INEC staff and inadequate security in some polling units are scenarios that encouraged overvoting or cancellation of votes, which led INEC to declare elections inconclusive in six affected states. In time pass where you don't have inconclusive elections, ask the operators of the system. They will tell you results are just written and after the election you start on printing to match the results you have declared. But now, because of the competitive nature of the elections, you are having a knife-edge victory. No more moonslide, no more landslide victory. In Minjibri local government of Kanu, whereby the card reader, I think there are 775 uh, um, voters in that, polling, uh, in that voting point. It's only 23 people that the card reader accredited. 
INEC and the police, however, gave assurances on the credibility and security of the supplementary pools built for this Saturday. Uh, since after the date for the election was fixed, we started preparation to ensure that uh, what happened earlier will not repeat itself. Sokoto is uh, ready security-wise and INEC is also prepared. We have 136 unit struck uh, points uh, for the, the supplementary elections. And uh, we have reviewed the lessons learned and uh, the security analysis of uh, the previous elections. And we are fully prepared for the elections. The guests appeal to political gladiators to allow peace to reign before during and after the supplementary elections. In Abuja, Serafina Okun, NT News. And in Imo State, the Saturday rerun election will be held in 100 polling units in five local government areas of the state. Resident Electoral Commissioner Professor Francis Ezionu disclosed this while speaking on the level of preparedness by the Commission for the rerun election. Beatrice Ayam reports. The five local government areas where the rerun election will hold include 12 polling units in Olu local government area, 9 in Ngo Bwala, 17 in Oguta and 15 in Isu, while Ikeduru local government area has the highest number of 47 polling units. Results of 22 out of 27 local government areas of the state have been declared before now. Imo State Resident Electoral Commissioner Professor Francis Ezono said election in the 100 polling units were disrupted with snatching of electoral materials and violence. It borders on disruption. Uh, our inability to complete election in some of these, these places. After collation, we discover that the margin of votes between the winner and the next person is less than the number of cancelled votes then the only option is to declare it inconclusive. So we are now going to run for a supplementary election in those areas that the elections were cancelled. Speaking on the level of preparedness for the rerun election, the resident electoral commissioner said... We are prepared for, um, or for the election on Saturday. The election is not all, all about INEC. The people out there also have a role to play. If INEC provide the materials and the politicians decide to disrupt it, INEC cannot be blamed. We just had a meeting of the ISIS, Interconsultative Committee on Election Security, to um, review our operational order for the Saturday election. So as usual, we have security personnel, but like I always say, the law does not allow this people who will be working at the polling booths to be arms. Professor Ezon, however, pleaded with politicians to conduct themselves as good managers and call their supporters to order in Owere, Beatrice Anyam. And in Kanu, governorship rerun is expected to be conducted in 76 wards consisting 280 voting points in 29 local government areas. Fatima Sanusi Karaye was at some of the affected areas to gauge the mood of the electorate on how they are preparing for the rerun. This is Gama Ward in Nasarawa local government area of Kano State, one of the wards where the 2019 governorship rerun election will take place this Saturday. And people in this community are anxious and ready to come out and cast their ballot. They said they are optimistic that the process will be conducted peacefully and in an orderly manner. I have with me Zaharadin Yusuf, resident of Gama Ward, and is eager to exercise his franchise. Ready to exercise our votes this coming Saturday. And our priority is Gama because our is our, our hometown and we cannot allow anything to happen to our community. So we are ready to put hands together in order to bring peaceful and cordial election without any violence. We are ready to exercise our votes in a peaceful manner, inshallah, on Saturday, 23rd March 2019. A visit to Gobarawa Ward in Dala local government area, the scenario is the same with what is obtainable in Gama in Nasarawa local government area. Though election in Gobarawa is expected to be conducted in two polling units out of the 18 polling units.
me, I am ready to come out and cast my voters, inshallah, on that day. We will do it successfully, inshallah. In Kano, Fatima Sanusi, RIA, NTA News. And away from the rerun elections, we're still in Kano State. The government has pledged more developmental projects to various communities in the state as part of the ongoing efforts to take development to the doorstep of the common man. Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje said this when he paid an unscheduled visit to Gama community in Nasara local government area. Abdullahi Mustafa has the report. This was a cross-section of people of Gama in Nasara local government area of Kano State. They took over the major streets of the area to welcome Governor Abdullahi Omar Ganduji, who is on an inspection visit. The turnout, Nasara local government chairman Lamin Sani said, is in appreciation of the governor's concern for the development of the area. Governor Ganduji thanked the people of Gama for the warm reception and enjoined them to conduct themselves during the upcoming supplementary elections. Dr. Ganduja assured that if re-elected, his administration will continue to execute more people-oriented programs and projects, not only in the area, but across the 44 local government areas of the state. Gama is one of the 234 registration areas where the March 9 governorship elections were cancelled in Kano State. Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. And Nigeria's ascension to the five United Nations Convention on Road Traffic Management is a testimony that the country is on the path towards greater road safety and reduction of carnage on the highways. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, stated this when the Corps Marshal Boboye Oyeyemi led a United Nations delegation to brief him on the giant strides of Nigeria's ascension to the global mon motoring standard in 2018. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed reports. The good news from Nigeria assuming this new status on road safety management confirms the readiness by the country in reducing carnage on the nation's highways, which on daily basis cause deaths of people and loss to the economy. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bos Mustafa, renewed government's commitment towards improved road infrastructure, which will in turn put Nigeria on best global practice in road safety management in line with the United Nations legal instruments. That's hard. Fair share of road fatalities and whatever we can do uh, to reduce that. I think that uh, Nigeria is has done a good job so far. It's on the right way. A post United Nations accession workshop is ongoing to equip officers of the Corps with new trends in road safety management. Ahmed Unders Ahmed, NT News. Central Bank Governor briefs on post-election agenda. We now move to Lagos, where Ruth is standing by with details of this and more. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Ogwa. Thank you and welcome to Lagos. Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefiele has projected a 3% GDP growth in the first half of 2019 fiscal year. He gave the projection at a forum in Lagos, where he further expressed optimism that the current monetary policy stance of the bank is expected to continue. Ad Bolade Salami has the details. Key financial players and stakeholders are gathered here to x-ray the economic performance and policies of the government in the last three and a half years, with a view to projecting ways of enhancing a more robust economic growth and set policies that would drive micro and macro economic performances. Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefele, while setting policy agenda, noted that monetary policy rate at 14% will remain with an expected GDP growth rate of 3% in 2019. The main post-election strategies should be, one, consolidating on the growth, two, implementing strategies and policies that will aggressively grow jobs on mass scale, and diversifying the base of the Nigerian economy away from relying on oil. On the exchange rate policy, the Apex Bank boss said he expects the banks, in spite of pressures from the volatility in the crude oil markets, to maintain a stable exchange rates. At the height of the drop in crude oil prices, our FX reserves had declined to 23.7 billion in October 2016. With the implementation of the tools mentioned above, the stock of our external reserve has recovered steadily 
and has risen to $44.8 billion as at March 19, 2019. The economic policies of the federal government, immediately further said, helped to drive the promotion of sustainable economic development, which resulted in the establishment of import and exporters window, and conservation of foreign exchange through the restriction of access of FS to 43 import items. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. Nigeria Customs Service Seme Border Command generated over 1 billion naira in the first quarter of 2019. Controller of the command, Uba Mohammed, says the command also made a number of seizures consisting of 23 vehicles and food items. Paul Omukagu tells us more. The 23 vehicles impounded include 17 fairly used and six means of conveyance with a combined duty paid value of 87.5 million naira. Comptroller Mohammed, while fielding questions from journalists on a suspect who was paraded in respect of a Renault car with diplomatic plate number, says the command is always at a lot in scrutinizing vehicular documents. When you see chassis number of vehicle, look very carefully. They have now devised a new means. They will suppress the original one. And you see the artificial now on the surface, and it will agree with their, with their new inverted documents. Other high terms intercepted by the Senate command are 5,383 bags of foreign rice worth over 97 million naira, 180 sacks of scrap metals, 27 jerry cans of vegetable oil, 24 cartons of seasoning, and 20 pieces of household materials. We will continue to impose the federal government laws against smuggling. You are aware the federal government policy has a policy of localized production, which all of us must keep together to ensure that the local rice is produced. We preserve foreign exchange. We get employment, thereby getting economic growth and development. Smuggling in the area the controller stated has reduced drastically following intensive operations by the enforcement unit of the command. From the Seme border, Paul Omukago, NTA News. Strengthening regulatory agencies and pharmaceutical industries to increase local production of drugs will reduce importation, which is the major cause of substandard drugs in the African region. This was the submission of speakers at ECOWAS training for local medicine manufacturers in Lagos. Joy Ken Abapoya has details. For many years, drug regulatory agencies in West Africa, including Nigeria's NAVDAC, have been fighting to eradicate substandard drugs in the region. Although the war has been tough, it is on record that the regulatory agencies have recorded remarkable improvements. The West African Health Organization, along with its partners, say they are determined to bring their anomaly to an end. And the adoption of the ECOWAS harmonized technical document, which will help monitor and regulate drug production and registration, is one of the measures taken. This training is therefore to teach local manufacturers how to effectively use the ECOWAS harmonized common technical document to produce drugs that meet required specification. If you can tell fake medicines in the subject, that means that we are controlling our own production procedures. And this CTD is one of the elements that are necessary to guide us to address the production capacities within the region. It will help us to upgrade the level of our quality, the level of our practices, and uh, to also be competitive with the rest of the world. Participants give their opinion on the training. It's an opportunity to increase the capacity of the local industry. It will enable all our products to be uh, in the West African countries. Over 60 local drug manufacturing industries in Nigeria are currently attending the three-day training. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abakuya, NTA News. That's our contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues after this break. Please stay with us. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, 
abducted and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it, don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Thank you for staying tuned. Nationwide continues now. President Muhammad Buhari has condoled with the family, government and people of Kwara State on the passing of the Isu Patigi, His Royal Highness al Haji Ibrahim Umar. In a statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Gariba Shehu, President Buhari commended the monarch's commitment to the peace, stability and development of not just his domain, but the entire state, urging that his worthy legacy be sustained. President Buhari also commiserated with the family, government and people of Katsina State on the transition of the district head of Kafur, Al-Haji Rabe Abubakar and Galadimon Katsina. He described the late traditional ruler as a deeply religious and kind-hearted man who was committed to the welfare and progress of the people in his domain. He praised God to comfort the bereaved families. And it was a Black Wednesday for the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps and the family of Jumbo Ochigboga as they lost an officer and breadwinner to the brutal action of police personnel. Ochigbo was said to have been beaten to death after an infraction which the police officers on duty wanted to punish. Francis Form reports. When Jumbo Ochigbo Oga an assistant superintendent of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, FCT Command, woke up Wednesday morning, the 20th of March, 2019, to go to work. Little did he know that he would have an encounter with sister agency, the Nigerian police, and lose his life as a result. They were pulling my husband out. They were using this, their button, that stick to hit my husband, or my husband on the head, you know, was hitting my husband on the head like that. Those I now went to him and said, I don't use this stick on him. He's supposed to be used on criminals. My husband is not a criminal. He's an officer like you. If at all, they should have this understanding. From what I understand, they should want the SP to call, which should be exhibited. It did not work here, and I don't know the reason why. There were different narratives on the incident at the Asokoro General Hospital, where where the cops was deposited. News about the incident spread like wildfire and people could be seen milling around in groups. Responding to media inquiries on the incident, the FCT Commissioner of Police, Balachi Roma, assures that investigation will be conducted and justice served. Uh, as you are aware, cops has been taken to the mortuary. It was evacuated from the scene, taken to the mortuary. Investigation has commenced at the conclusion of our investigation. If anybody found one will surely uh, be brought to justice. The angel of the core is also doing everything possible, putting everything in place to ensure that uh, incident of this nature doesn't occur again. The NSCDC commandants, FCT command, appeals to officers and men of the Corps to remain calm and law-abiding as investigation into the incident is ongoing. In Abuja, Francis Form, NTA News. Judicial officers and legal practitioners have been advised to assist in government's prison reform efforts by ensuring speedy trial. Chief Judge of Ekiti State, Justice Ayodeji Daramola, gave the advice during a visit to Ado Ekiti prisons. Kola Adebobui reports that 21 inmates regained freedom at the instance of Justice Daramola. The clamor for prisons reform through the congestion of awaiting trial inmates 
and provision of necessary facilities in line with the global standards has over time remained a constant to stakeholders. To achieve this, the Chief Judge in Nigeria State believes a lot needs to be done by concerned bodies, hence his visit to the Nigerian prisons in Adrogeti, which has capacity to accommodate about 500 inmates, but at present has about 400 people. The Chief Judge took time to assess the offenses of the 327 awaiting trial inmates brought before him, where he expressed dissatisfaction with the delay in trial of some of the awaiting trial inmates and exercised his statutory power to grant 21 of them unconditional freedom with a message to them to sin no more. Those who are facing robbery charges, we cannot release those people. Only court, after they have been tried by court of competent jurisdiction, can release them. Justice Daramala advocated speedy airing of cases before them to achieve quick justice dispensation in Adoegiti. Kola Adebobuyi, NT News. Meanwhile, the trial of the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, resumes this Thursday at the Code of Conduct Tribunal in Abuja. Justice Onoge is being tried for false declaration of assets. Olabo De Arewa reports that at the resumed trial, the prosecution counsel, Aliu Umar S.A.N., called second prosecution witness, Awa Liakasai, a retired director at the Code of Conduct Bureau. Aliu Umar, S.A.N., led him in evidence. On the cross-examination, the defense counsel, Adebo Egawomolo, S.A.N., the second prosecution witness said the CCB does not release public officers' CCB forms to members of the public. Based on this, the defense counsel argued that one Dennis Agaya, the author of the petition marked as Exhibit 1, must have hacked into CCB ICT records. Awomolo's SAN point pointed the attention of the court to Onogen's 2014 CCB forms, which he said had remained unverified. He stressed the need for the tribunal to invite the petitioner to come and defend the content of his petition. The defense also moved to tender a letter written by the PW2 to the CCB. And away from the judiciary. Poets say inability to express oneself may force one to resort to violence or other extreme ways of expressing one's feelings. Well, it is against the backdrop of that UNESCO instituted 21st of March annually as World Poetry Day with focus on building bridges between cultures for peace. Serafina Okun tells us more about poetry as an art. Social media has presented itself as a god to some people, and people are paying tithes with their time. Poetry captures the creative side of an individual and helps him to express his personal experiences and inspire others in a redeeming way. It serves as a form of recreation and helps in renewing the body, soul, and mind. The art of writing a poem, poets say, is different from presenting poetry, as the art of rendition must go with the rules of engagement, such as rhymes, rhythms, structure, and pace. Spoken word um, artists whose form of poetry is a little more freer than the traditional form of poetry that we know. And sometimes in trying to sound like what they think a spoken word artist should sound like, they destroy the poem. Poets develop the ability to see the world in abstract forms by taking something ordinary and making it extraordinary. They equally see beyond the surface to create exceptional poems. Experts say the development of any society is linked to the development of languages in that society and poetry encourages individuals to develop language through capacity to think. Poetry also helps us connect. It also helps to build bridges between uh, people, between cultures. So if I read your poem, I get to understand you better. I get to see the world through your eyes. So it helps to develop what we call empathy. That's the ability to see the world through the other person's eyes, which is a very important emotion 
a nation building. World Poetry Day is set aside by UNESCO in 1999 to ensure people are engaged in expressing happiness around the world through writing and reading and teaching of creative poems, as well as foster the convergence between poetry and other arts, such as the theatre, dance, music and painting. Do you not know that poverty is not an man? He will not spare the rest of us and afflict only the Ishan. He'll step across the river and come across the border. So when the drums sound, let everybody answer. The objectives of the day include supporting linguistic diversity through poetic expression and offer endangered languages the opportunity to be heard within communities. In Abuja, Serafina Okon, NT News. An INEC in Benue State prepares for supplementary elections. Pam Domyang in Makudi Studio will tell us more. Thanks, Ogwa, and welcome to Makudi. The Independent National Electoral Commission in Benue State is to conduct the supplementary governorship elections in 22 local government areas and the State Assembly elections in nine local government areas on Saturday, the 23rd of March. 2019. Resident Electoral Commissioner Dr. Nantawe Yilwada stated this after a meeting with stakeholders in Makudi preparatory to the exercise. Charles Abba reports. The cancellation of the governorship and state assembly elections in some areas in Benue State by INEC was due to violence and failure to use card readers. The Resident Electoral Commissioner Dr. Nintawe Yilwada explained that only 109,733 voters who collected their PVCs out of the 121,299 registered ones would participate in the governorship polls. He added that the elections will be held in 204 polling units under 49 registration areas across 22 local government areas in the state. If any of the to give any information to anybody that is required, I'll go back to open. Dr. Nintawe further indicated that no new party agents would be admitted for the exercise and that electoral officers for Obi and Vantikia local government areas have been stepped down from the supplementary elections. The Commissioner of Police, Umar Muri, the Deputy Governor of Benway State, Benson Abonu, and other stakeholders appeared for peaceful polls. The Commission says there will be no movement of persons during the exercise across the state. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. And that's all we can take from our Makudi studios. Moving on now, henceforth, resident surveyors at the various states are to be queried in the event of escalation of any interstate boundary dispute in Nigeria, as well as failure to identify the solid mineral deposits in their respective states. Surveyor General of the Federation, Ebisinte Awudu, handed down the directive in a meeting with the resident surveyors in Abuja. The Surveyor General was emphatic on the role of the Surveyor in driving the diversification policy of the federal government, especially in the areas of solid minerals and agriculture. I want you to function more effectively and efficiently, especially in these areas of diversification of the economy and in resolving interstate boundaries. When you hear certain information, please make your reports very, very fast. In order to achieve optimal productivity in the system, the Surveyor General rewarded some outstanding staff of the office and promised to take decisive steps against staff found wanting in their line of duty, especially those who disobey surveying regulations. And to stem the rising tide of forest depletion in Nigeria, the Federal Ministry of Environment is to partner with the judiciary for effective implementation of forest laws. This was at the 2019 World Forest Day. Mia Ogidi reports. <laughs> 
the streets of Abuja, we are busy at the early hours of Thursday, 21st of March 2019. It was a work for life, yes, work for life. And you may not question that for very obvious reasons. It is a road work organized by the Federal Ministry of Environment to sensitize Nigerians on the need to preserve the forest estate in Nigeria. The usefulness of the forest cannot be overemphasized for various reasons. For instance, the forest reduces emission of greenhouse gases, reduces noise pollution in urban areas, regulating water cycle, urban beautification and tourism, source of renewable energy, provision of condiments, fruits, nuts and leaves for the local population, maintenance of wildlife habitat, as well as nutrient recycling for improved food security. So, the Federal Ministry of Environment is trying all its best to ensure that the nation achieves the 25% forest reserve being earmarked by the United Nations organizations. This is because the current forest reserve in Nigeria is just less than 5%. So I took up officials of the Federal Ministry of Environment on the factors responsible for the fast depleting nature of the nation's forest reserve and the way forward. Cut down the trees because we also use the, 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 the wood as firewood. Trees that are so important, we are trying to look for money. Another one is illegal logging by exporters. It's cut one, plant five. So we are ever any state that everybody are operating, our advice to them is we are ever they want to cut, they must plant. We have an environmental uh, impact assessment rule law. We also have uh, the, what they call the Convention on International Trade on Endangered Species of Wild Flora, which we have domesticated to our own law. So the laws are there. So what is expected from the government at all levels is effective implementation of forest regulations. This will definitely increase the forest estate in the country and also beautify major cities, just like the one I'm standing right here at Area 1 in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Nigeria. Mie Ogedi, NTA News. Thank you, Mie. Well, sadly, some residents of Adoekiti are counting their losses due to the havoc wreaked by rainstorm. Tayo Show reports that residential and commercial buildings are affected, while the state government has promised to assist victims. As some people are thanking God for a refreshing rainfall, some are left in uncertainty on what next as regards having a roof over their head as the rain blew off the roof of some houses while some electric poles were also affected. Residents are ever grateful for the safety of lives as an eyewitness confirmed that the storm blew off the roof of a yet-to-be-completed church auditorium on a parked car along the road with residents still clearing the debris when NTA News visited the scene. The storm really affects our buildings here, so we need help from government. Traders in Fayoshi Market, the fence behind the market was pulled down during the rainfall, which has left them in panic of the safety of their goods. Despite the fact that it was just some, uh, uh, some hours, it didn't, uh, during the time that the rain fell, the, some oolongs penetrating to the market started to break some shops, in which our, our goods are now well safe again. Since the, the market belongs to the state government, we want the state government to help us in time to come and help us rebuild the, the fence. Ekiti state government has since promised to help the victims in Adwekiti, Tayo Osho, NTA News. And still talking weather conditions, Nigerians have continued to lament the severe weather condition in the country, which they say is becoming unbearable. Medical experts, however, say the only way to cushion the effect of the hot weather is for people to increase their consumption of water to avoid dehydration while prioritizing ventilation. Aisha Ubali tells us more. So, and as we, are, we just have to support ourselves, we help ourselves by taking, you know, much water. If you bath like uh, during cold time, you bath like two times a day. You have to bath like three times. Well, maybe when sleep, when you want to sleep, you bath too. Exposing the children and those ones that are not immunized for against uh, meningitis, you can immunize them. The family have to take precaution and make sure that their children are immunized. 
Lamented on the weather situation, residents of the FCT seem to be aware of some of the precautionary measures needed to cope with the heat. The capital city, according to the weather forecast for Thursday, is 37 degrees Celsius, whereas the normal temperature is usually between 25, 26 or at most 27 degrees Celsius. The harsh weather condition is causing discomfort during the day and even at night. Speaking on some of the effects, medical practitioners say it is important for caregivers to be vigilant at this point as there are possibilities of heat strokes which can lead to fainting, meningitis, measles and cholera among others. They are losing more water through sweating because of you know excessive heat and they need to replenish the sweat. So when you're dehydrated for long periods of time, your kidney, your urine concentration is a lot higher than normal and there's an increased chances of you developing renal stones. The skin which lines the nose dries up very easily, gets cracked up easily and um, this leads to bleeding through the nose. But the good news here is that the Nigerian Center for Disease Control is on alert as officials of the agency are already working with the state to curtail any outbreak. This, we call them, these TWGs have been, have been working around the clock, especially monitoring the pattern of the diseases in places where we've been recording outbreaks um, in recent past. So for measles, there's now an, an anti, and meningitis, there's now what we call emergency operation centers that have been opened, especially when we started recording um, hygiene cases or when we expect to have a um, high number of cases being recorded. While Nigerians wait patiently for the rains, it is expected that relevant agencies must step up awareness campaigns. In Abuja, Aisha Obaali, NTE News. We now take Adamu Sambo's story on President Muhammadu Buhari's formal expression of appreciation to the media, to media practitioners in the country for enhancing the transparency and accountability of the nation's electoral process through professional conduct of the 2019 elections. As important pillars of every society, President Muhammad Buhari said their news reporting responsibility is what drives public opinion and facilitate decision making for good governance and effective service delivery. This means you have a moral and professional obligation to present the facts as they are. I seek your support in ensuring that you report the truth. You must not allow yourselves to be influenced by individuals with divisive motives. I agree that journalists face significant threats in executing their mandates. Please be assured that the security agencies and all instruments will continue to do their very best to protect journalists, especially those operating in hostile environments. The president, however, expressed worry over the way and manner the untrained participants in the social media platforms present stories that are neither true nor factual to millions, thereby creating an alternate reality in their minds. I am sure you will all agree that the biggest threat to the sustainability and credibility of your profession is the uncontrolled and unregulated news platforms operating in the cyber space. Innocent lives have been lost or destroyed due to this fake news phenomena. I therefore seek your cooperation to bring a sustainable end to this menace. While wishing Nigerians a peaceful supplementary elections, President Buhari promised to remain committed to a safe and secure nation, inclusive and diversified economy, as well as a governance system that is free of corrupt practices as he looks forward to the next four years. NUJ President Christopher Isiguzo had congratulated the president for his re-election through the ballot box, which he attributed to his record of integrity and genuine commitment to national development. He commended the Nigerian leader for the giant strides recorded in the fight against terrorism and insurgency, as well as corruption, which he described as systemic and endemic, saying the Nigerian media will continue to play a vanguard role in Nigeria's quest for good governance and corrupt free society. Your Excellencies, although 
It is said that the media and government cannot be institutional partners since one is expected to hold the other accountable. However, we are all stakeholders in the Nigerian project. We shall therefore, as a duty, continue to support the fight against corruption and the quest for peace and security, good governance, and the rule of law. Corruption leads to the depletion of national wealth, and all hands must indeed be on deck to ensure the success of this fight. President Muhammad Buhari also granted audience to the governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, and Abubakar Sani Bello of Niger State behind closed doors. If you understand Nigerian politics, I am the only APC governor in the South South and Southeast. So it means that I must keep a very close relationship with my president. Niger State should be rest assured that um, uh, we're committed to uh, providing dividends of democracy. We're committed to completing uh, projects we have started. In addition to new ones uh, uh, we want to embark on that will be of benefit to the general public. So um, there's a long way to go. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, we'll get on it as soon as possible. More messages of felicitations are still pouring into the presidential villa as celebrations continue across Nigeria over the recent endorsement of the next level movement by the nation's majority. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And residents of Port Harcourt and River State react to passage of minimum wage bill. Mina is in our Port Harcourt studio to give us the update and other stories. Hello, Mina. Hello, Ogwa. Good afternoon and welcome to Port Harcourt. There is hope in the air for Nigerian workers in River State as they await the implementation of new wage of 30,000 Naira just passed by the National Assembly. Onengie Fineface reports. While River's people still await the conclusion of the electoral process, workers in the state are already smiling home with news of successes made with the new national minimum wage at the national It's been a pending thing. Even the 30,000 uh, minimum wage is not a living wage, but they are passing it at least is a step in the right direction. They say beyond the passage of the bill into law, there is need for President Muhammad Buhari to urgently assent to the bill so that workers can begin to benefit from the new minimum wage. So we have been fighting for this money, they say, the money. Let's not give what the workers that we enjoy. They should keep what now. We are alive. While commending the federal government for the efforts made so far, they ask that palliative measures be put in place so that workers can make the best of whatever they get as they are take home. And market forces that could also result in the increase in price of commodities and services in the country. There are countries where government get involved in things about prices and then also maybe make a, some some kind of maybe accommodation. Then you know that whatever money you're earning, it becomes profitable. After more, the Nigerian Labour Congress is already asking the federal government to ensure that the new minimum wage is implemented before workers celebrate another workers' day in 2019. In Port Harcourt, on Nengie, Fine Face, and the news. Away from that, the Court of Appeal sitting in Port Hackett has been to Yenigoa by also state for two weeks. The move is to reduce costs for plaintiffs and litigants. Doris Akamoye witnessed the inaugural session. The Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice said by also state is privileged to have the law lords to the state, which will have enormous impact to the people. He said the state has sued for the establishment of the courts in 2014 and 2019. Chief Judge of Bios State said the visit will provide ample opportunity to clear backlog of appeals and urge lawyers to take advantage of the visit for speedy dispensation of justice. The work by lawyers are here to be on which involves hearing of appeals, which could have lasted for a year plus in just a few days. Presiding Justice of the Appeal Court's Port Harker Division, Justice Ali Abubakar, disclosed that 80 appeals and 160 motions have been filed for hearing and will need the support of lawyers to succeed. And uh, whoever I am, among you are able to 
The team is expected to spend two weeks in the states. Due to the large number of cases that will be attended to, the session is now being divided into two. In Yeregoa, the Bayosa state capital, Doris, NTA News. In view of the federal government's determination to put an end to maritime crime, the Nigerian Navy Forward Operating Base, Ibaka, says that we continue to guard the nation's coastal lines from being used as illegal entry points. Jenny Bassi reports that merchant vessels with 12 suspects on board were arrested by men of the Forward Operating Base, Ibaka, Akwaibom State, and have been handed over to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The commanding officer forward operating base Ibaka, Navy Captain Reginald Adoki, were handing over the vessel that the suspects were arrested while conducting illegal bankery of substance suspected to be diesel without due authorization. He maintained that the merchant vessel at the time of arrest had no form of approval for the transfer of a product which violates the extant regulation regarding any movement of petroleum in the Nigerian maritime environment. We want to restate the continued and unalloyed commitment of the Navy to ensure that we do our work creditably to rid the, our area of operations of illegal activities. Zono Head Economic and Financial Crime Commission, Uyo Abdul Karim, took the Commission's readiness to collaborate with the Nigerian Navy to fight criminality. We are going to investigate, and at the end of our investigation, we are going to charge them to court. Navy Captain Reginald Adoki also handed over one medium wooden boat, 523 bags of contraband rice, and one pumping machine for Nigerian Custom Service from Ibaka, Mbo local government area, Jenny Basi, NTA News. And that is our bit from here, Port Harcourt. Nationwide continues in just with Felicia. Thank you, Mina. Welcome to JOS. Ahead of the governorship and state assembly supplementary elections in some states of the country scheduled for the 23rd of March 2019, the National Peace Committee has organized a town hall meeting in JOS with key stakeholders geared towards reinforcing peace during the exercise. Zanred Nimun reports. The meeting is held simultaneously in some states where supplementary elections will take place as part of the committee's initiative to ensure the electoral process ends well. Representative of the Chairman National Peace Committee, Duke Aneumwa, emphasized the committee's commitment to upholding peace by organizing high-level dialogues such as this. This meeting is geared to reinforce the message of peace and to implore actors and their supporters to accept the outcome of the results of various levels of the engineering process, especially this rerun. Resident Electoral Commissioner Husseini Hali Lupai and Commissioner of Police Plateau State Command Isaac Akimoede said they are working together alongside other security agencies to achieve a peaceful, free, fair and credible election. In the de delivery and deployment of electoral materials, INEC is also at a comfort level in its readiness for the elections as scheduled. Representatives of religious, traditional and community leaders, civil society organizations all added their voices to advocate for peaceful elections across the states where supplementary elections are taking place. In JOS, Zenra Dingmun, NT News. The outgoing Catholic Archbishop of Jos, Most Reverend Ignatius Ayo Kaigama, has urged leaders and the led at all levels to engage in service to humanity that will bring about social transformation, national cohesion, and meaningful development for all. The bishop said this in a briefing after his appointment as the co adjutor Archbishop of Abuja Archdiocese an apostolic administrator of the Archdiocese of Jos by the Holy Father, Pope Francis. Ijoma Oziamena has the details. 
The appointment of Most Reverend Ignatius Kigama by the Holy Father Pope Francis on the 11th of March with a right of succession when the tenure of an incumbent archbishop expires. By virtue of the bishop's appointment, he will oversee activities in the archdiocese of Jos and fulfill all normal pastoral duties. The Apostolic Administrator of Jaws Archdiocese, Most Reverend Kegama, said his predecessor, Cardinal Onaikon, still remains the Archbishop of Abuja until he tenders his resignation letter to the Holy Father and the Coadjutor Archbishop of Abuja is canonically installed in a liturgical ceremony of the church. For now, things proceed as normal since as Apostolic Administrator, I perform all the duties that I was performing before as the Archbishop of Jaws Archdiocese. However, with my announcement as co-adjutor of Abuja Archdiocese, my duties in Abuja have commenced. The Apostolic Administrator explained that his successor is yet to be known and when he will be installed. Until the Bishop's new appointment, he has served the state for almost 19 years to the glory of the Almighty God. In Jos Ijoma Ozemena, NTA News. That's our contribution from Jos. We'll take a break. Nationwide continues shortly in Abuja. Thank you, Ruth. We'll, we'll, we'll now take our sports update with Kene Emabodike. <laughs> 